cannabis uh, Canadian uh, giant. Um, Tilray, are they a beer company or are they a cannabis company? The lines are being blurred more now than ever. Uh, they made a major wave this week, diving deeper into American alcoholic beverage lane with the strategic acquisition of four, count them, four, notable four. craft cannabis brew, or excuse me, craft breweries. Mm -hmm. um, so is the company looking to become the biggest beer producer in the U.S., or is it a bigger plan to monopolize the fastest growing segment in the industry, Jason? It's your not really, favorite. It's not really skewed data. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. So Cannabis Business Times, uh, Noel Skodzinski, uh, she reported that this Tuesday, Tilray Brands Incorporated entered into a definitive agreement to acquire four craft breweries from Molson Coors Beverage Company, including Oregon-based Hop Valley Brewing Company, Georgia-based Terrapin Beer Company, Texas-based Revolver Brewing, and Michigan-based Atwater Brewery, uh, bringing the company's beverage footprint to a total of 18 brands. Skodzinski uh, says that the move follows Tilray's ongoing strategy to acquire leading craft beverage brands across the U.S. Um, and their, import, uh, their portfolio includes a 2023 purchase of eight beverage brands and brew pubs from Anheuser-Busch, including Ten Barrel Brewing, Wedmere Brothers, Red Hook Brewery, Square Mile Cider, Breckenridge Brewery, Blue Point Brewing, Highball Energy, and Anheuser-Busch's in-house created Shock Top Wheat. 2022, uh, they acquired Montauk Brewing Company, a leading New York based craft brewer with distribu distribution across more than 6,400 outlets, including top national retailers such as Target, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Stop and Shop, King Cullen, Walmart, 7-Eleven, Costco, BJ's, and Speedway. They also had a 2021 20, acquisition of Sweetwater Brewing Company, which at the time was the 10th largest craft brewer in the nation with distribution across more than 40 states as part of Tilray's merger with uh, cannabis giant Afria Incorporated. Uh, 2021 acquisition of Breckenridge Distillery, Colorado-based Colorado distilled spirits company, largely known for its award-winning bourbon whiskeys, and ironically known as the world's highest distillery at 9,600 uh, feet above sea level. In a press release, Tilray Brands chair, uh, chairman and CEO Erwin D. Simon said that the Tilray Brands is proud to be driving the most compelling and unique growth story in the craft beer industry. With an acquisition of these four craft breweries from Molson Coors, we are marking another strategic milestone in Tilray Brands' growth plan. Simon said that the company, which supports over 40 brands in 20 countries, including 13 adult-use cannabis brands, four medical cannabis brands, hemp-based foods, and craft beverages, plans to continue to invest in the future of these craft bre uh, breweries, accelerating their, accelerating their growth and capturing a wide range of new market opportunities. Tilray Brands is a beacon for craft brands, and we are committed to driving their growth and success within our portfolio, he said. Our proven track record of integrating acquisitions and driving profitable growth gives us confidence to deliver incredible value for our shareholders. According to Molson Coors Chief Commercial Officer Michelle St. Uh, Jacques in the same release, last fall we set a clear portfolio of premium premiumization never heard that word so sorry for my uh, uh fucking it up but uh ambition and achieving it it is going to require tighter focus on the segments we believe have the highest growth potential for our business while we love these craft breweries and the people behind them this move allows us to do exactly that focus our time energy and resources behind the initiatives we believe will best help us meaningfully grow our us above premium portfolio in beer and beyond beer. Sounds like they're going to be focusing on the piss water beer and moving mm -hmm. away from the actual <laughs> the mm -hmm. tasty frothy IPAs. And finally, uh, Ty Gilmore, president of Tilray Beverages North America, said that through this acquisition, our beer business is expected to grow to 15 million cases annually, cementing Tilray Beverages as the number one craft brewer in the Pacific Northwest, number one craft brewer in Georgia, and anchors Tilray's craft brands in two key uh, beer states, Texas and Michigan. Sounds like we have a, a Canadian invasion, Texas. Y'all are looking at the wrong border, Texas. <laughs> Scott Zinsky, on her part, noted that Tilray is not alone in the cannabis beer and unification movement. You're uh, writing that for starters, this is not Molson Coors' first cannabis transaction. Uh, the company's Canadian 
unit teamed up with Canadian cannabis producer Hexo back in 2018 to form joint venture Trust Beverage Company, producing cannabis-infused non-alcoholic beverages. In August 2023, however, following the acquisition of Hexo by Tilray Brands in June, the two partners confirmed that the sale of Molson Coors' 57.5 stake in Trust to Tilray. Molson Coors' chief communication officers Adam Collins said at the time <clears throat> that the cannabis beverage market has not grown to the industry's initial expectations. Expectations. Oh, have things changed since then? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Uh, and that they decided to sell their portion of the Trust Canada, uh, Can Trust Canada JV, and exit this space and focus on other segments with stronger growth potential. GTI CEO Ben Kovler said he expressed interest in a merger between GTI and Boston Beer Company um, of this past June. Kovler released a June second letter uh, writing to Boston Beer Company founder and chairman Jim Koch, uh, in which he was proposing a merger of the companies. Kovler wrote that he thinks that the combination of the two companies can be the future of consumer brands and recreational activities and well-being in America. And going back some six years, international beverage behemoth Con Constellation Brands, umbrella to Corona and Modelo, uh, was a first mover into the cannabis industry back in 2018, with an initial investment of $4 billion into cannabis growth, eventually increasing its stake to 38% shortly after, with another $3.8 billion injection. Uh, the company did, however, announce earlier this year that it was divesting from Canopy. So it looks like with can um, uh, Canopy on the rocks, Tilray is moving in, and um, even though Jason Beck did not want to admit it it was confirmed by several minnesotans including one of our favorites editor at green state rochelle gordon that cannabis beverage companies essentially saved the land of Ten Thousand lakes as craft beer industry when it was on life support so my questions are, will tilray be doing the same Will Tilray be doing the same for the regional American craft uh, um, beer namesakes we've all come to know and love, but they seem to be too expensive for the beer companies? Are they going to save America's craft beer industry? Or they will have the factories, they will have the real estate, and now they own the logistics. Mm -hmm. Is this the Trojan horse play that Tilray's been waiting for all along to take over American cannabis? Let's talk about it, y'all. I'm Rico Lamit, the dopest dad on the street for High 9 News. <laughs> Tilray making moves, man. They're making moves. If that's what you call this. That's yeah, what you they're making moves. <laughs> These are major yeah. fucking moves. <laughs> I mean. Especially uh, especially uh, planting uh, such big stake in Texas. Uh, if, if, they, if, if they buy out Shiner Bach, man, like, it, mm -hmm. this is a full-time jack move. Do you right think here. Shiner Bach would sell out to a Canadian company? Like, Money that seems talks. very un-Texan, un I mean, he talks, I mean, he talks bullshit walks. I mean, Budweiser is owned by a Dutch company or a no, Belgian, uh, Belgium it, company. It, yep. And Tilray bought out all of their craft beer already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, well. this, is, this, this seems like a full time jack move. And I, I, I think this is a Trojan horse play. Tilray has been trying to enter the, the U.S. market for years and has not found a way. It looks like craft beer uh, being on the rocks here. Um, they found it. <laughs> mm hmm. In my opinion. Mm, interesting, interesting, interesting. I mean, I, I still don't see the big hype or whatnot in regards with with this. Of course with, you with, don't. with the you beverages. Don't like I'm not I'm just not a fan. But I do I do I do agree that there is high margins if you can get the the, the if if you can corner just a, a portion of the beverage market because ninety nine percent of all these beverages is just water. Hey, but, 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 but hear, hear me out here. Hear me out here. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the beverages. It's about the logistics. Yes, I, about, I, I agree. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. The it's about the regional footprint mm -hmm. also. So um, you have all these things and all these factories opening. You can start with that. You have your footprint. And if we have legalization come down or we have decriminalization, like whatever goes on over the next two years while they're establishing that footprint in these areas, guess what? They are already a national brand here in America, and all they do have to do is flip the switch. They have mm -hmm. the money, they got the real estate, and um, like I said, man, I, I see this as a Trojan horse, a major Trojan horse play to get ahead of the curve, not only on the beverage market, but they can also flip the switch and start selling other things, uh, uh, mass-produce uh, Canadian booth weed mm -hmm. in these markets as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already producing lots of booth weed in Canada, Rico. Just America's saying. next. Just saying. Just saying. America's next. Mm -hmm. We'll see.
Do you have any thoughts on this, Dr. T? Yeah, yeah well, I think it's going to be difficult to switch from beverage, cannabis beverage, to flour. It's just a, a different processing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot more to it. Uh, what, what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying, Doctor uh, Doctor T, on this is, they will have access to the market, especially the, uh, Texas, where Delta Eight is already huge. They can start pushing out their names yep. out there at gas stations in Texas mm -hmm. <laughs> before the market even opens up. Oh, they can have it right now. I mean, yeah. I, isn't pe yeah. people selling cannabis type one cannabis under hemp in Texas now anyway? Yep, they're already started yep. with the brand recognition. Yeah, basically what he's saying is is that they are going to be increasing their infrastructure to be able to capitalize more on that market share, Doctor T. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good play. You know, uh, it, it's it's the it's the game of capitalism, mm -hmm. isn't it? And that's yeah, the game. There it is. Oh yes. Yeah. The game of I capitalism. I think the beverage market. To me, what's interesting about this is that the beverage market is a viable market i do feel that there's a switch away from alcohol and and this is a good position to be in where you can sort of offer an alternative to alcohol i don't think it's mm. going to take over alcohol but i think it's going to lessen what alcohol is, is offering fair enough fair 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 enough any final thoughts on this matthew before we move on weed in your backyard grow weed taxation is theft <laughs> capitalism is the devil oh boy oh boy we're gonna go to a commercial yeah, and, uh, friday what's that rico Canada's, canada needs to build a wall to the north man i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> texas, texas needs to be building that wall to the to the north i agree with that Same, man that's, that is big. Big. Oh, needs to build a wall between us and nevada too or at yeah. it <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Boy. no that makes my drive longer <laughs> <laughs>